Hi, my name is James Catherall. I'm a co-founder of Catherall Audio, and I just ordered my first soldering iron. Here it is. This is the FX888D by a company, and I know I'm going to mess up the name, but I believe it's Hakko or Hakko, H-A-K-K-O. And I just had a pile of electronics that was building up and they were all broken, but they all had really simple things that just needed to be re-soldered so I could get them working again. And that pile just started getting big enough where I knew it was time to order the soldering iron so I could get them back into working shape. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the process of fixing one of those items. It's going to be a MIDI controller. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how I fixed one of those items, and it is going to be a MIDI controller. Looking on the back of it, at that USB connector. Those USB connectors on MIDI controllers are notoriously fragile. Those are usually the first and really the only thing that breaks for me on my MIDI controllers. And usually I buy pretty low end MIDI controllers because I don't really use a lot of the faders and the knobs and the drum pads and any of that fancy stuff. I usually just need a pretty straightforward MIDI controller. It's usually only like $100 to $150, but as those things break, it can really add up over time if every year or every two years I'm buying a new MIDI controller, just adds up that cost that I don't really need to if I can just solder it and fix those USB connectors. And in general, it's actually pretty easy. I am far from an expert in soldering. To me, I think that's really going to be sort of the point of this video, is showing you how easy it can be to solder and fix these MIDI controllers so that you don't have to go out and buy new ones. I think that soldering things like this can generally be pretty forgiving. It's pretty difficult to really make any large mistakes that are going to permanently break any of your electronics, especially if you do just a little bit of research beforehand. And I'll link some videos and some other stuff down below that you can check out before you dive into soldering. And it'll be from some more soldering experts that can give you some general tips on what you need to do when you are soldering. I think in the long run, this ends up being a much cheaper option. This soldering iron was about $100. Plus I got some solder and a soldering braid. Here's my solder. This is rosin core solder. It has lead in it. I think based off of everything I read, you want to avoid any of the lead free stuff just because it tends to be a little bit more difficult to work with. Only thing you want to be careful with is once you're done soldering, you want to wash your hands really good before you're going to do something like eat or anything else where your hands are going to get close to your mouth. I also got a desoldering braid. It's like this. This is going to be what takes the solder off of the component before you replace it with the new one and add on the new solder. Both of those things are about $10 each. The last thing you're going to need for this project is a USB connector. Looks like this. I'll link the website where you can order these from because you won't find it on Amazon or anything like that. The website looks pretty dated, like, like 1998 kind of dated, but still works, gets you what you need, and you can get these USB connectors onto your MIDI controller. Before you order the USB connector, I would just suggest taking apart your MIDI controller just to check which one you need. The ones that I ordered have these connectors on the bottom. The other ones you can order will have the connector on the back, so you just want to make sure you get the correct one. All of the MIDI controllers that I've ever repaired have the connector on the bottom, so you're probably a safe bet that that's what you're going to need, but I'll just double check in case so you don't have to reorder more. And when you order these, I would suggest getting a bunch of them, like 10 to 20 at a time, just because they're only 60 cents, and so the shipping can end up adding up so that you're buying one 60 cent piece and then you're also adding on the $9 of shipping. You could just buy like 20 of them and then pay that $9 of shipping and then also probably never need to order any more of those USB connectors ever again. All right, now we've gotten all of that out of the way, let's start walking through how we're gonna repair this MIDI controller. So here's what that broken USB connector looked like originally. So first I'm gonna flip over the MIDI controller and then I have to take out all of the screws that hold the case down. Just wanna make sure there's probably gonna be some different screws. Some of them are holding down the keys of the keyboard. Some of them are holding the case together. To take this apart, I'm gonna use my iFixit kit. It comes with a lot of different screwdrivers that can really help when you're taking apart electronics. When you're taking the screws out, you're gonna want some type of screw organizer. That way you're not just dropping the screws on that flat table surface you're working on where they can roll off and end up disappearing into the void of nothingness. You can put them into an organizer where they'll stay and that you know they're not gonna get separated. One thing you can use that's really cheap and easy is just an ice tray, like this. This is just a silicone ice tray. You can drop the screws into the slots of the ice tray probably put them together by groups so that way when you're reassembling it's much easier to find the screws that you need. So you can have the PCB screws in one spot and then the screws for the outside case in a different spot. Thank you. 
Now, once I've got all the screws out, I'm gonna flip the keyboard back over and take the top off. This will reveal that main board that has all the inputs and outputs of your MIDI controller. It's gonna be some ribbon cables. So I'm gonna take all those off, but you might just wanna check before you start unplugging them to see if you need to label any so that when you plug them back in, you know that it's all gonna be correct. Once I have those ribbon cables out, I have some extra screws so that I can completely remove that PCB and start working on desoldering the USB connector. So here's one more look at that broken USB connector. And now I have it flipped over. On these USB type B connectors, there's gonna be six spots that you have to desolder. Four of them are pretty small, and then two of them are a little bit bigger. So this is where I brought out that desoldering braid, and then I bring my soldering iron, and I touch it to the soldering joints, and I melt that solder on it, and then it gets sucked into that desoldering braid. It can take a little bit of trial and error as you're going through it, Got to make sure that solder is completely melted and there's none of it left. Then once you have it all removed, then you should be able to pretty easily slide out the USB connector. Just make sure you don't tug too hard because you can end up damaging the PCB board if you tug too hard on those connectors before it's ready to come out. If you feel like it takes a little bit of extra effort, then go back and check that all of the solder has been removed from all of the joints. So I pulled out the old connector and now I slid the new one in and I get ready to solder it. So here I'm soldering in the new connector. Just wanna make sure holding the soldering iron to the connectors and then just touching the solder to it just to melt a little bit on there. And the other thing I'm checking for is what they call a cold soldering joint, which is where the solder isn't actually touching the trace and you don't have a full connection. I also noticed partway through this, I ended up putting too much solder on one spot, so I had to go back and clean it up before I applied more solder. Each MIDI controller is gonna be slightly different, but with each one and all the different types that I've repaired, it's the same general process. There's gonna be screws on the bottom of the case that you have to take out. Then you're gonna unplug some ribbon cables, unscrew the PCB, and then get to soldering. Now all that's done and I'm ready for the final test. I tested it off camera, so I would suggest before you reassemble everything and put all the screws back in, just connect the ribbon cables and then plug it in and see if the board turns on. Then once you've done that, then it's just the reverse assembly process. You screw the PCB back in, flip the board over, and then put all those other screws back in. And now here's the moment of truth. Turn it on, and it works. And that's how you can replace any of your broken USB connectors on your MIDI controllers. Hopefully this was informative and maybe hopefully made it a little bit less intimidating so that you can be comfortable jumping in and start replacing USB connectors on your broken MIDI controllers. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you in the next one.